Our linear take, make, waste economy is one of the leading causes of climate change. A lot of the efforts made to address this global challenge have focused on transitioning to renewable energy, but this will solve only half the problem. The circular economy can help us tackle the other half by transforming how we make and use materials, products, and food. How? Well, let's go through the three principles. By eliminating waste and pollution, we reduce the emissions associated with the production of the materials that go to waste. By keeping products and materials in use, we retain the embodied energy in products and materials instead of producing new materials which generate greenhouse gases. By regenerating natural systems, we store and retain carbon in the soil where it also helps build soil health. Through the circular economy, we can build an economy that's fit for a thriving climate. Now let's look at some of the climate content we've covered in the show. It really struck me that so much of the climate conversation is about switching to renewables and energy efficiency, which is obviously absolutely vital. That we, you know, we understand that, everybody understands that. But then there's the kind of the 45%, which is about how we make products, how we use products. That could be, you know, cars or phones or food systems. They have a massive implication towards climate change. And yet, in the conversation, that, that part doesn't seem to be illustrated as well. There's this, the, you know, the energy transition, we get it, we're on it, you know, we're, we're transforming. But there's a massive potential there. And when we looked at the numbers, looking at steel, cement, plastic, food systems and aluminium, and switch those to circularity, about half that 45% could be tackled with that. So we feel incredibly optimistic that there's this great opportunity through shifting to circularity to, to work towards climate targets. And I am you know, thoroughly delighted that you all um, are pushing on this because to be perfectly honest, um, we are still at the point in which most of the effort and most of the focus and most of the financing is going toward how do we produce X? How do we produce energy? How do we produce transport? Um, how do we produce food? And so we're still very much caught into this linear thinking and still uh, caught in chapters one and two of that linear thinking, right? Which is extraction and use. And we haven't closed the loop to figure out, and then what happens? Once you produce the solar panel, once you produce the, uh, the wind turbine, once you produce the electric vehicle, and then what? And it's that and then what that we're not focusing on yet, right? We're going at this and addressing climate and emissions very much from a linear economy perspective without fast forwarding or thinking to the end of that linear and then asking, you know, the very difficult question, then what happens? This is the Ellen MacArthur Foundation Circular Economy Cafe located in the New York Times climate hub space here in Glasgow at COP26. It's a hub of conversations about the role the circular economy can play in tackling the climate crisis. We're really rooted in this idea of driving regenerative business in a circular economy. This is all key at the end of the day and we, the way we see it is it all comes down to materials um, and the, the, the implication of different materials in different contexts. Everything comes from somewhere and in those places the natural resources, the impact of climate and the impact on people's day-to-day -day lives are so intertwined. Right? Every, every product is someone's livelihood. Every, every resource that, get, that gets turned into something came from nature. So there's really no way actually to not connect them. And I think we've been missing the conversation for so long by not really thinking in this more robust way. Um, so for us, at the core of all of that is if we put economics, environment, and people, then you, you really get to different sets of solutions and different sets of ideas. We need to, you know, do a big trick, which is economic development within planetary boundaries, within the safe operating space. The only way to do that is to ensure that economic development stays within finite budgets. So, of course, the linear economic model we have today, where you just exploit, add value, and then create waste, is, is not going to take us to the future. The future must be circular. The future must be more regenerative. It must be more restorative.